Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit. Happy Monday, everyone. If you're new to my channel, thanks for coming and checking me out. If you're one of my loyal subscribers, thanks for returning. So today is Monday, and Mondays for me means Creative Arts Group. And it was pretty good. It was, and we painted with acrylic paints, just, you know, we had a picture of like what our, what it looks like for our, when we're having anxiety or panic attacks versus what it looks like when, you know, what, what we want it to look like. And so my painting of what it looks like when I'm having anxiety is, you know, I have, with my depression, it's not so much gray and dark and dreary. You know, that, you know, a lot of people, you know, you can understand that. My depression tends to be beige, unfortunately, kind of like my walls. I didn't pick the color of my walls. Um, and the color of my walls doesn't hurt my depression or anything. But no, beige is just bleh. It's just... It's neutral. It's nothing. That's why a lot of apartments tend to do off-white or beige walls. I mean, it's just, it just is. And so there is this beige filter over everything. And, you know, there's the depression, the anxiety, you know, all the bad emotions are there. They're muted by the depression. The same way my, my good feelings, my, you know, the happiness, the excitement, you know, pleasure, things like that get muted by depression. So it's just, I walk around with life, through life with a beige filter, and I, it's not the funnest thing in the world. I mean, but then again, you know, I also describe my depression as apathy with a vengeance. So anytime I can feel any kind of intense emotion, even for a little bit, it's better than not feeling. But thankfully with this YouTube channel, with the community event on here, you know, I'm starting to have a couple more, you know, a little bit more of the, the good, you know, the good feeling. Better than just constantly beige and dreary all the time. So thank you guys for being there for me. Well, cat being, should be a cat. So anyway, um, my work's in progress today. I mean, I've been working on scrunchies. I'm not sure where they went. You know, we've, we've got the, these are the completed ones, and I've got one more to add to that that I finished today. Did this one, I forgot I'd finished it when I was at the bus station. I didn't much like working with that yarn as much as the other ones. There's something about it, it just wanted to stick to the, to the hook. So, but then I'm almost done with this one just simple gray which i really like and what i'm doing the pattern that i've decided to stick with is you know of course it's the single crochet when you're first putting it on the ponytail and then i do a row of half double crochets two in each stitch and then the next row is double crochets three in each stitch so that gives them nice and full and gives them a little bit of shape or size, you know, some mass to them. The card, the card of can that I'm working on, I've progressed to. Now we're just doing stocking, stockinette stitches for the next that's like 17 inches or something. So this is just kind of what it looks like, you know. That's the the right side right there. So we had the two by two rib um, ribbing, and then we had. The garter stitch, right? Two rows of that, right there, or technically three rows, and then we're onto the stockinette. So I like it, and it's you know, it's doing good. I'm still having. I can only do a couple rows at a time because my hands are so used to crocheting right now that the the different motion with um, knitting kind of makes right back there hurt a little bit. But then again, sometimes back there just hurts. And it's not, it's not a nerve pain, it's a joint or a bone or it almost feels like, like your ankle's um, sprained a little bit, which I know that's more of tissue, but I don't really know how to explain it. I have a weird response to pain. Um, there went max. Uh, I have a high pain threshold, but a low pain tolerance. So it takes a long time before something actually registers a pain and then it turns into a big wimp. So... 
I feel sensations that I know is pain, but it doesn't hurt. And that doesn't make sense to most people. But I just get this weird sensation in the back of my hand that I know is just, okay, take a break for a little bit. But it's been like that since I was a little kid, I would get that, that weird pain. And sometimes, you know, just pushing down like you're standing up, that's enough to make that weird pain there. So anyway, so I, I do this one here and there. And, and I think part of it, it's, it's the bigger needles. And I've never liked, big, like, I don't like big ink pen, but, you know, the big fat pens that people like. I like the tiny, skinny zebra pens. You know, I like the crochet hooks. Everyone gets these big, huge, you know, ergonomic ones. And I'm just like, that's just, you know, like trying to crochet with your toothpaste tube or something. I mean, to me, it's, I feel more comfortable with the skinnier ones. So, like, so I'm lucky because of the boy, the, you know, the cheap the, or not cheap, but the inexpensive boy aluminum ones were great for me. So, and but the next project I'm going to start in addition so I can rotate between all these because the ponytail holders I do towards the end of the night when I just want to kind of, you know, wind down for a little bit or when I'm out, that's now my, my transportation one. If I'm out riding the bus, I take the ponytail holders and the scrunchies. So I'm kind of alternating between the cardigan and I'm going to start a washcloth. It's a TARDIS one, and it's by Lindsay Ebert, who is Holinarf on Ravelry, and I believe in one of my previous um, videos I had the link to the tar to that um, pattern. But it is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's just a simple TARDIS dishcloth. So I'm going to do that. And I know that they'll come out pretty small, you know, that size-ish. Especially since the yarn I'm using. This is some of my Mexico yarn. And, and this, it calls for a size 3 needle. So you know it's going to be small. It's tiny. Yeah, I used my lovely yarn winder to wind the yarn. Make it take. Yeah, so I've got my... Super skinny lobotomy needles, the size three. So I'm gonna get started on that after the video. But for mail call, for things I got in the mail today, let's see, first off, okay, I was excited. I ordered this neck light on, from eBay. You know, I've seen people, the ones that just goes around your neck like a little U-shape, and it was an LED, and it was listed as rechargeable, and then I went back to check on the pat listing, and it's removed. And I was like, well, did they cancel? Did they not? So I was just like, well, I'll just see what happens. So it shows up in the mail today. So I'm excited. You know, I've got my thing. It, you know, it lights up. That's brighter to me than it is in the thing. Oh, I didn't have it on all the way. But yeah. The problem being, and this may be why it was removed if it said it was rechargeable, is the only reason it's rechargeable is if you replace the AA battery or the AAA batteries in there. So not really rechargeable. But... For three bucks, I'm really not too horribly disappointed. So, you know, I'll use it, see how it does. I may end up deciding that I absolutely can't stand it, or I may decide that I may feel I mean, that I really absolutely love it and want to find one that actually is rechargeable. So, it's three dollars was a good price to pay for something that you're just checking to see, you know, if you like. And then I'm in the process of getting shelves, and I got. This is for my knickknacks, it's not for my yarn, and it came, you know, all these little individual pieces I had to screw together. So I did that, and it is, oh, four feet-ish, somewhere around in that range. So I'm going to hang it on the wall tomorrow. I've got the stud finder on the wall so I know, you know, where approximately to put it. And the other thing that I got is I got this cute little flower pot. And I know it doesn't seem anything neat, but if you look at it, it's a storage one. Like, you hide stuff in it. I mean, you're not going to hide a whole lot of stuff, but, you know, you can put something down in there. So I thought that was neat when it comes time to uh, start, you know, getting a plant for spring. 
find a plant that I can have around my cats that don't that doesn't attract my cats because the one time that I tried to get a live catnip plant that was an adventure. I had to keep the thing in the sink. For some reason, if it's in the sink, they left it alone. But I would go and I would pick out, you know, get a couple of sprigs off for them. And they would have fun. And, you know, I have realized I am my cat's drug dealer. Um, but I accidentally left it out one day. And I woke up to a dead plant in the morning because they ravaged that thing. You almost fell off, didn't you? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, and I got this thing. This is so cute. It is. It's a live plant. I've had this a couple times before. If it will focus on it. You don't have to open it. You don't have to water it. It's own little, you know, whatever your environment. The little goo at the bottom is what feeds it. And it came. I. Oh, I, had, I put up the postcard where I wouldn't lose it. That came with the instructions. So when it gets a little bit bigger, if it starts out growing it, I can actually transplant it into something else like my flower pot. So, because it'll last about two months, maybe three months in the little container. And then by then it'll be, it, you know, it'll be warm enough that I can actually transplant it to the flower pot. So, but anyway, that is where I am today. Um, today's not been, you know, all sunshine and butterflies. Um, I've been having, you know, adjusting to the different meds, trying to, you know, find the right dose and whatnot. And uh, so, you know, and then coming back from vacation, of course, you know, that disrupts everything. So I'm just trying to take care of myself and just chill out and, you know, relax with my cats and everything. I checked my calendar. There is nothing on my schedule, so tomorrow is a no pants day, or just stay in pajamas all day. So I'm just going to chill out and relax and hope that I get something good in the mail tomorrow, because, you know, I get stuff from eBay all the time, so surely something will come, because today I didn't have a whole lot of mail, and Saturday I didn't have a whole lot of mail, so I'm thinking my mailman's about to get deluge of little tiny ebay packages for me so anyway hope everyone is doing good and i will check in with you guys again tomorrow have a great evening